Science is wonderful and I was attracted to science really by the, the fascination of discovery. Um, and I actually started out uh, qualifying as a dentist. And the reason I did that was I loved discovery, I loved life sciences and I loved engineering. And kind of dentistry combines all of those things. It combines discovery and it combines you know, microengineering. And in the course of that I did a research degree and then I sort of liked dentistry 98% but I liked research 100% um, and continued uh, to investigate things like birth defects and wound healing um, where there are really important questions but the answers to those questions are both fascinating in terms of new knowledge but they also have applicability. So science is central uh, to any economy in my view. It's central because research is always a sustainable uh, engine. You always need to discover new things, whether it's better products, new information, better healthcare, and so on. That piece is sustainable. Other things may wax and wane, depending on uh, uh, climate, for example, for manufacturing or for production and so on, but the research piece is sustainable. It's very important for advanced societies like Ireland, where actually the intellectual capital is very important. It's very important in my view for Ireland's recovery um, from the economic uh, uh, crisis that has hit the country and indeed many countries around the world. Why is it key for uh, recovery? Number one, you will attract industry here. Number two, you will keep existing industry here. And number three, you will build industry here on the back of research. It's for the short, medium and long term. So I see science as central. I see science and SFI as part of the solution, not part of the problem. If you look at scientific research in Ireland and you go back 10 years, it was probably nowhere. And in the last 10 years, largely through the eff efforts of SFI, it's really got on the map. So, you know, Ireland now consistently ranks overall in the top 20 countries around the world with real patches of excellence, for example, in immunology, in materials, particularly nanomaterials and so on where there are rankings, you know, number three, number eight, and so on. So this is good, all right? There are real patches of excellence, and we need to maintain that. This is an ever-moving field. There are lots of people who are being very competitive and wanting to um, overtake us. And equally, science moves on. So we always have to have a key, an, an eye to where are the interesting emerging areas, where could we be excellent in the future. And that's really about SFI's funding programs, which are in part reactive, driven from the bottom up, but are in part thematic, taking a, a theme and driving uh, things. And it's that thematic piece that I will be developing uh, from the baseline of, of the ground up. So the answer is to the question, you know, where should we be? Who knows? We need to be nimble, we need to be at the cutting edge, and we need to be places where we can get economic advantage, and that's precisely what we will do. Well, over an overarching goal for SFI should be excellence with impact. So that's really what I want, excellent science, and impact of the science. Some of my short-term goals uh, for SFI are better leverage of non-Irish exchequer funding, so encouraging researchers to get financing, for example, from the European Union or from companies or from charities or foundations, using SFI's money creatively to incentivize them to do that and to reward them if it's been successful by uh, adding to the program for sustainability. Also better measurement of impact. I'm really keen that we can articulate good stories, that we can measure impact bluntly. What have you discovered? Why is it important? And what have you done about it? Um, so impact, I think, is uh, increasingly important. Public engagement, it's very important that we both encourage school children to come into science, that we educate the public about the wonders of science and the application and the importance of it. And that may even go to the extremes of having the public engaged in the assessment of the research proposals because increasingly around the world there's a disjoint between the people who are paying for the research, i.e. taxpayers, and the people who are doing the research, i.e. scientists. And bridging that gap is both politically and societally important. So there are a number of very specific goals in terms of thematic programs that I won't dwell on, they'll roll out. Uh, through the normal challenge, but overarching those, it's about impact, it's about excellence, it's about engagement, and it's about leverage. Public engagement of science is really important for many, many reasons, and I will be driving an agenda there with SFI. It's a very timely agenda because SFI have now responsibility for the Discover Science and Engineering program that was assigned to us, which reaches out to primary school and secondary school children, as well as our own activities uh, for the public. It's important so that people understand they have to have a framework 
for rational uh, ways of interpreting the world so that they don't get over hype or over negativity so that you can steer away through this. It's very important because of the importance of getting people in for economic and societal development. And I also think it's very important because as taxpayers, people should understand what are they investing for the future, which is discovery and science, as well as for the present, which may be roads and schools and hospital beds and so on. They're all very important, but actually engaging the public in that debate, giving some of the thrill of science, giving some of the importance of science without overhyping it, is really important because actually I think most people are interested. If you want a hard metric, for me a sign of success would be that every week RTE had a dedicated slot on, the, on their news where there was one to two minutes on science and that the average person in the pub or on the street in Ireland talked as enthusiastically about that slot as they did about the football. That's a pretty high bar, but that's the bar. In terms of exciting projects, this is probably the most exciting time ever to be alive in science. And what do I mean by that? It, the pace of scientific discovery is as never before. So previously, the rate limiting step in terms of applying science was how much you could discover. That's no longer the case. The rate of discovery is so high in life sciences with the unfolding of uh, genetic and molecular mechanisms, in ICT with, for example, uh, you know, circuitry and getting things ever faster, ever quicker, ever connected with smart systems that can learn, you know, and people thinking in a few years time, you'll walk into your home, everything will be connected, you know, a little box in the wall saying if you take a shower now it'll cost you two euros, but if you wait till 11 o'clock it'll cost you 85 cents. You know, all of these things are interesting. Energy, Ireland leads the world, you know, 40% of the energy that goes into the Irish grid is from renewable sources. That's a big challenge to solve. You know, if it's a windy day, you put a lot of energy in. If it's a calm day, you don't. You've got to sort out all the logistics of that. So there are very, very exciting questions right across the board, life sciences, energy, ICT. And I'm really keen on what are called Ireland's unique selling points, USPs, you know. What is it that we can do, like the grid, like uh, a, a limited population where you can pilot you know, electronic patient records or ways of developing a smart country, never mind a smart city, uh, and interesting uh, situations where there's a lot of indigenous industry or real academic strength, for example, in immunology or medical devices. So there's lots of opportunity. You know, the glass is more than half full. It is definitely not half empty.